Okay, in this video, I'm going to show a way to perform an OptiRest with a very targeted approach to the uh, machining area to be included. And so this example, this is a solid model in this pocket region right here. We want to machine this out as if the rest of this part has already been machined and we want a very specific uh, OptiRest toolpath that comes in just to clear this material out. So I'm going to just show you a, a way to handle this. So first step is we're going to go into the solids menu and we're going to use the trim by plane. And so this will allow us to trim the solid model down to this plane so that we can create a fill area here. And so we'll pick the solid model here and then make sure that the split solid option is selected. Then we're going to come down here to plane and pick plane by entities and I'll come in and I'll just pick this face right here and then we'll apply this and that'll split the solid into uh, different components here um, so you'll see that if we go into the solids tree what was one solid is now actually a total of six solids so you'll see there's a solid here a solid there a solid there so everything above that plane now is a separate solid model so for what we're doing here, what we want to do is just look at only this solid. So I'll select that by clicking on it, and then I'm going to use the hide command, which is Alt-E, and I'll hide the rest. So what I want to do now is I want to create a solid body that fills in this area. So to do that, in the model prep menu is a, a function called modify feature. So I'm going to select modify feature. I'm going to come down to the floor of this and just double click. It'll say remove solid history. I'll say yes. Now you can double click and pick up uh, the rest of that region. And so now you can see that that area has been selected. All of those walls and this rib feature have all been selected. And then over here, I'm gonna tell it to create a body. I'm gonna hit okay. Now that's created a solid model that fills that. So to show that, I'm gonna select that. I'm gonna hit Alt E and Alt E again and you can see that I have a solid model uh, that is the area of material that we actually want to remove. So again, uh, when it's time to machine this, what we want to do is consider this to be the stock. So what we're going to do is we're going to come up into the tool paths and I already have some operations set up just to speed up the, the video here. So I'm going to go into the first operation, which is a stock model operation. I'm going to open it up, and then I'm going to show you that I've named this the lower pocket stock. And the model that defines that stock is this solid model, that new fill that we just created. I've got this uh, modeling this as glass, so it'll be translucent, so we'll be able to see through it. And there's no so source operations included. We're just going to hit OK, and we're going to generate that stock model. OK, so now that that's generated, I can take that solid model that's there, and we can just hide that. So I'm going to go and use the blank option and just blank that. So you can kind of see there's a translucent representation of the stock that's there. OK, so now that we've set that up, we're going to go into this OptiRest op operation. I'm going to open this up. And I'm going to tell it we're going to do dynamic OptiRough. And on the model geometry, we're going to select uh, basically everything that's on the screen. We'll just select everything. But we're going to come in here to avoidance just to kind of show how this works. And we're going to make sure, let's, let's make sure and avoid uh, this solid. So I'll triple click on that solid. Anything, you know, that we want to make sure we don't bump into. This is probably out of the way, but... The heck, we can pick everything that's sticking up above that plane if we'd like. So we'll pick all those as avoidance. Let's say make sure we stay away from that uh, by a few thousandths. And then on the machining region, I want to leave five thousandths on the walls. But on the floor, I'm going to let this toolpath finish the floor. So in toolpath control, uh, I'm just telling it to stay... Um, you know, inside of this feature, I don't need to select any any boundary uh, features at all. Toolpath type, again, is OptiRough. Model geometry, we've got the machining region set. 
toolpath control, just kind of at the defaults. Tool selection, I've got a tool selected. I'm going to turn on the RCTF because this is dynamic milling. I've got it coupled with a holder. One of the things that we're going to do is we're going to make this holder, we're going to stubby up this tool to three quarters of an inch. Now we're, then we're going to find out if that actually clears all of those other features. We're going to come down here to stock and then for stock we're actually going to say one other operation and use that stock model that we just created as the, uh, the stock. And then in the cut parameters, I'm going to use some, some nice defaults that I have for dynamic milling. I've got my steep shallow set to the bottom of the pocket and the top of the pocket. Um, linking parameters, I use uh, kind of some default settings here just to get, the, get this started. Arc filter tolerance. Arc filtering is turned on to about a 5,000th tolerance. We'll hit OK and we'll let this generate. Okay, so it says containment boundary is required for rest roughing. The min-max limits of the machine data will be used. So it's going to look at that solid uh, or that stock definition as the boundary, and it's going to keep the machining inside of that. So after generating the toolpath, what we end up with is a highly optimized OptiRough that stays in only that area. Uh, machining away the material and avoiding these other features on the retract. So what we can do if we want to run this through the verify now is let's go into the blanking and let's unblank the solid model that represents the stock. And we'll take all of that and just include that in a new stock model. So I have a blank stock model operation here. And I just called this before Opti. I'm going to come down here using the model selection. And I'll just drag a window and we'll select all of this as if all of this together is the stock. And we'll set that up. We'll regenerate that. Let that generate. Okay, that's done. Now we'll come up here into our verify or our simulator options. We'll open this up. And then we'll set the stock model to before Opti, the one that we just created. And we'll set it to that. We'll hit OK. Then when we go to select operation number two, which is the OptiRest, and we watch this run in simulation, we'll click the uh, Verify Selected Operations. Let that process. This opens up. That's what it should look like before we start machining. We'll hit the green check mark, And we'll let this run through. Yeah, it looks like that's uh, that's perfect. Good entry there. Okay, but before I go any further with this, let's go make one more change here. So if we want to keep uh, the best rigidity on that machining, you know, we may want to go in to the holder and let's take the stick out of the tool down to maybe three quarters of an inch. All right, so now that is probably colliding with the rest of this in certain areas. So, but we want it as short as it can possibly be. So there's a tool in MasterCam now in under tool paths called check holder. So I'm going to use the check holder feature to test that particular operation for what is the required stick out. So we'll set up a a holder clearance, I've got it 10,000, so I've got a shank clearance, clearance of 0 0.001. We'll tell it to perform test. What it'll do is it'll come back and it'll uh, process and it'll come back with a rec recommended projection. So it says that we need 1.56373 projection to give me the clearances that I'm after. I will turn the shading off so that you can see this area in red is where there would have been a collision, but now that's been avoided by having MasterCam automatically adjust the stick out of the tool. So I'm going to hit OK. We'll let it modify the holder. We'll go right back into the uh, Verify. Uh, before I do that, I'll take this, select it, and let's blank that once again. And then we'll select that same operation, run it back into Verify again. Now I'm going to speed up the verify, so I'll move this towards fast. 
maybe reduce the precision a little bit. That will make it process a lot faster. And we'll hit the play button. You'll see we get a highly optimized uh, roughing that comes in. It forms in this rib ready for some finish machining. Uh, everything's avoided uh, and pretty uh, highly optimized tool path using this targeted op OptiRest approach. I uh, hope you find this beneficial.